and we are back with another video. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you might have seen that I've been doing an NA Plus T build on my BF Fairmont. Um, I've got all the turbo part of it done now, so the manifold and turbo is all fitted, and now it's time to fit up the exhaust. Now, for the exhaust, I've actually got a FG complete exhaust system here from Turbo Back. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to completely fit yet, so I'm interested to see how this goes But I'm hoping it all just bolts up because I've used all FG turbo stuff on the exhaust side of the engines Now like I said, this is a complete FG exhaust system. So whether it fits 100% or not um, We'll have to wait and see So before we get started, I thought I'd just run through what we get here So it's a complete FG 4 inch system from Ants Performance um, It's a complete bolt-on stainless steel um, and most of it is V-band flanges There are a couple here so you get the four bolt flange off the dump and there's also a two bolt flange off the back of the cat converter which goes to the rest of the, the system. So as I mentioned, it is a complete four inch system um, with two mufflers. So there's the rear muffler there and the center muffler and it's got a five inch high flow uh, 100 cell cat converter and you get the dump pipe as well included in the, um, in the kit. Now the rear muffler has a single four inch tip on the back which I prefer over the twin. Just a nice clean look out the back of the car in my opinion. Now I think for an off the shelf sort of out of the box kit, this is awesome value for money. The uh, dump pipe itself has a, a cast, I'll show you here. So if you look at the five bolt flange here, you'll see it's an actual cast piece, not a, um, you see inside there, not like some of them. Some of them are actually crushed, they crush the steel and then just weld around the outside. And some of the welds can be pretty manky. So this being a cast piece is quite a nice little touch. That should help it flow nicely. There is some carbon in there, as you can see, because I've had this hanging off the back of the turbo, just so this soot didn't end up on the um, firewall. But yeah, really nice bit of gear. So the dump pipe has a provision for your oxygen sensor, your O2 sensor there, and the cat converter has one for your rear sensor. Like I mentioned, it's also got V-band joins, which is pretty cool, except for the cat converter itself and where that cat converter meets onto the dump pipe. So that's everything that comes in the kit there. You get the complete exhaust system, and you get the V-band clamps as well, and a couple of gaskets. Now with these type of gaskets, I like to use um, the orange sealant high temp, high temp silicon either side of them, because they are um, common to leak and fail these things. Um, I don't have any at the moment, so I'm just gonna get it all on the car, and if they do leak, I'll um, revisit this and yeah, get some sealant on it. Now I have seen some comments online um, where people have had to lower the diff cradle to get a four inch system over the top of the diff cradle. Uh, I've never done one before, so I'm not too sure. So I thought I'd start at the back of the car and try and see that how that goes first, and then sort of work my way from the back to the center. And then I'll put the dump pipe on and work from the dump and um, join up to that. So that's the reason I've got the car facing this way. I can get it the back uh, jacked up quite high from here. So hopefully we won't have too many issues. So just a quick look under the car, that's the little gap there where the, the system needs to go. So it is quite tight there as you can see. Um, so yeah, we'll just have to hope for the best and see how we go. Now I've had this car for almost two years now and it's had a, um, an oil leak, a pretty serious oil leak the whole time I've had it. But I've had the engine out and changed some things so I'm hoping that I'll fix that issue. Now because of that leak there was oil all under the car, like sandy oil. Um, it was covering absolutely everything. So a couple of days ago, I came out here with the high pressure hose and gave it all a good hose off. So it's all clean now, so there's no crap up above the um, where the exhaust will go. So we should be able to get the exhaust in and um, yeah, should be good to go. Now a hoist would be really handy to do this job, but I don't have a hoist obviously, so I've got the big jack. So we'll have to see how we go. There's not really much to it anyway, just some rubber hangers and then the bolts that join it all together to sort of the front. So not a hard thing to do. But just we'll have to see how we go getting it over the diff. But I'll stop babbling and what I might do is I'll grab the um, the rear muffler and get that in and we'll just see where it's looking. We'll get the hangers on it and see how it sits and go from there. Now people have told me I need to show my face more so um, here it is. I've um, got the car up plenty high enough to get underneath and do this and I've got a couple of stands over there just to hold up the exhaust when I get underneath the car a bit further. So I think what I'll do to get it started, we'll get this rear muffler section slide underneath with a couple of hangers and we'll see where we're looking. All right, so I'm under the car now. Um, I've just sat the muffler up, just held it up in place to see what the go is over the, um, the diff cradle. Um, and it looks like I should probably get this section in first. I'm gonna need as much room as I can to sort of squeeze that um, the pipe that goes up and over into this hole here. So I might get that pipe in first and um, get a hanger on that because that's just held in by a hanger. 
and then we'll look at getting this rear muffler in. Okay, so I've slid under the car and that section slid up nicely. Um, not sure if you can see in that spot there, but it's just getting caught here on the lip of the diff cradle just here as you can see and it's also pinching up the top against the um the heat shield there so i'm going to have a bit of a wiggle with it a bit of a play just try and maneuver it and see if i can get it to squeeze in um i don't really want to go damaging it but if not i think i may have to lower this cradle down it won't be much just a f sort of 20 mil just to um get this in okay so that was a bit of an epic fail tried getting it in and it just started scuffing up the um the back of the pipe so i don't want to go doing that so i thought i'll just get the tools out and do it properly i did have sort of an idea that this might have been the case so yeah to do it properly you need to lower your diff cradle to get a big four inch system in so i'm not going to film any of this i've done plenty of these um diff cradles rear bushes and stuff like that so i've got a fair idea of what's involved so i'm just going to smash it out and uh, we'll come back when i've got this section in where it needs to be Okay, now I've started unbolting everything, but I just thought I'd show you. Um, I've had to uh, take the bolts right out of the diff cradle, as you can see. I had the nut sort of halfway down and lowered it a little bit, but it still wouldn't fit in there. It got through a little bit further, but it was still binding up just the way that it's shaped. So the diff cradle is still connected by the trailing arms and all the brakes and everything. I haven't actually disconnected anything. Just had to take the shocky bolts out. I didn't have to undo the top one, but I don't like um, having them under tension, so I've just loosened those off as well. So really all I've done is taken out the six bolts holding up the actual um, diff itself, or the cradle, and that bolt in there as well. So I'll lower it down now, but I wanna try and keep the thread sticking through the holes here, as you can see. I'll try and do this with one hand. It's coming down now. Nice and steady. I'll stop it there I'll grab the pipe and see if we can get it in well unfortunately lowering it down that little bit wasn't enough I've had to lower it down quite a bit more the threads are still through the cradle they're still up inside the hole so it hasn't actually completely come out um, but I grabbed the pipe and put it in from the back here and it went straight in so I don't know if I should have done that in the first place but main thing is it's in now um, I've got the front hanger on so it's sort of just sitting in where it needs to be Okay, I've just hung the uh, clamp on just so that's ready to go. So now I'll get this rear muffler in and we'll see how it's looking. There we go, got the first clamp on. That was a bit of a mission, trying to line the two up while laying on the floor and get the clamp on at the same time. But we got there in the end. Now as you can see here, I've got a busted rubber mount for the um, shocky or the spring saddle. I've got some spare ones of these in the, um, in the shed. When I bought them, I noticed this split not long after I put them in. Um, and I think the reason it happened is if you look up underneath here there's a little piece of metal just there that sits out and I think when the weight's gone on it, it's just split that rubber and yeah torn it to shreds but BC Racing actually sent me out a um, another pair so while this is out I might see if I can bang that little piece of steel down and then uh, yeah replace this I might replace both of them there we go. So I've just taken the adjuster out for the rear spring and yeah, that confirms the theory of that little piece of metal sitting down and just, yeah, splitting that rubber to pieces. So I was always going to address this when I did the diff bushes because I know I've got to do diff bushes in this car. Well, I want to. Um, but yeah, I'll put these in now. I'll get rid of that bit of steel hanging down and yeah, I'll get that sorted. Otherwise, it's just going to tear through the new one as well. So I've gone out to the shed and found the two new rubber seats for the springs. But I'll just show you. Okay, I've just got a couple extensions, uh, long extensions, um, socket extensions, half inch ones, and just smashed at that with the um, hammer. So it's nice and flat now. So I should be able to get the new one in and get all this back together. And there we go, all done. Diff's back up in place, all bolted in. Took a bit longer than I would have liked, but I managed to um, replace that rubber that was busted on there and just cleaned up a few things while I was in there. I'm not one to sort of just slap things back together, but um, I just wanted to get this done. Now, I probably will be doing something with the diff. This isn't an LSD diff, it's just a single pegger. So I do want to get an LSD um, in the very near future. So when I get to that, I'll address all of this and um, probably do the diff bushes then. Now I'm just thinking while the car's up this high, I was gonna spin it around, but um, it's up pretty high. So I think I might slide underneath. I've got the center section out here, as you can see. 
Uh, I might slide underneath and just see if I can actually get that attached. We'll have a look. Alrighty, just slid under the car. And as you can see, I've just got the end of the um, center section there just up on a jack stand. So I think I should be able to get this clamp on. So you can see the section that goes over the dip just there. So if I lift this up, I should be able to get that clamp on. So I'll put the phone down and see if I can get it on. Alrighty, got that one on. That clamp was a lot easier to get on with the third hand. Third hand being the jack holding up the other end. So that clamp is on. So now I've just got one more section to go before we get to the cap converter and then the dump itself. So I might slide underneath with the next section and just see if I can get that one on as well because I've got plenty of room here. And if I can get that one on, I might not have to move the car. So I'll grab the next section out and see how I go getting that on. Okay, you got that front section on. So we've now got the two mufflers in and the first part of the front section. So now all that's left is the cap converter which goes on here and then the dump which goes up from there. Now the clamps are on just loosely. I'll um, get everything sitting right first before we go tightening anything up. And I'll need to get it sitting right from the front because all the front is bolted in. So what I might do now is move from this part and I'll go up to the front. I'll get the dump out and mount the dump to the back of the exhaust uh, on the turbo. And then we'll look at getting the cap converter in as well. And then we'll be getting pretty close to having this thing in. Alrighty, up the front of the engine now. Got really poor lighting and I can't turn any lights on because um, the power company are doing some scheduled maintenance today. So we have got zero power. But I do have some exhaust studs. So these studs are for the back of the turbo housing to hold the dump pipe on. So I'll get these in and then we'll look at getting the dump on. So here they are. They're just a titanium stud, just like all the others, with a titanium washer and a nice nut for them. So there's pretty bad lighting in there. Um, so yeah, I'll get these in and then we'll have a look at once the, uh, the dump pipe's on. There we go, the dump is on. Uh, what I've done is I've left out a couple of studs. Now I had them all in, but then I thought it's going in next week to get this taken off and be welded up. So I've just got three um, nuts on, two at the top and one sort of in the middle down the bottom to keep it all nice and square. And I'll leave the other ones in the car. So if the guys at the fabricators need to get it on properly, they can do that. But at least now it's on there all nice and secure and I can jump underneath now and bolt the cap to this and then connect it up to the rest of the system. All right, so now we're all done up top. The last piece to go in is the cat converter, which I've got here. So there's just two bolts up one end and four up the other. Got all the bolts and the washers here. And now these bolts that it came with, they're a high tensile bolt with a spring washer. But it didn't come with any flat washers. I'll just open it up. Okay, so I've got all the bolts here. Now this is um, everything that came in the kit, but it didn't come with these flat washers. It just came with spring washers. Now there's two bolts that go into the back part of the cap that connect to the rest of the system. They're a big M10 bolt. I don't have any flat M10 washers, unfortunately, so I'll have to leave the flat washers out of those. Um, but I've got plenty of M8 ones, so the, the four bolts on the front of the uh, cap that go to the dump pipe, they're just uh, M8. So they came with spring washers, like I said, but no flat washers, so I've just chucked a flat washer on there, and I'll chuck one underneath the nut on the underside as well. And once it's all in the car, I can get some flat washers and chuck them on these. That's no big deal. And there we go. The cat is all bolted on. So it's bolted onto the dump fairly rigidly. Um, I left the spring washers off because I realised I'm sort of thinking too far ahead all, way, all the time. Um, I left the spring washers off because, like I said, they're going to have to get the dump pipe out when it goes to get welded. So just to make life, e life easy for them, um, yeah, they'll be able to get that off easily. But it is mounted nice and secure. It's not moving at all. So now I should be able to get this last flange on and then I'll be able to sort of get the thing twisted and where I want it sitting and tighten up all the V-bands and that should be it finished. Okay, so I went to the shed and looked properly and I found four M10 stainless steel washers. So I just couldn't put it on without them. All right, it's the next morning now and the exhaust is all fitted. Um, I was out here till a little bit late last night because I got it all in and then uh, it was sort of skewed over the... Um, over the diff. Now, I did have some issues with the V-band clamps. I was out here till it was sort of getting dark. Just because I wasn't happy with where everything was sitting, um, this center muffler was sort of uh, on a bit of a lean, tipping down on one side. So I loosened it all off, basically even this one, and just um, sort of sat it exactly where I wanted it to sit and worked my way forward. I worked from the back one here and then, yeah, moved my way forward to the, um, 
the bolts up on the back of the cat. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned, I did tighten the cat converter on the front where it meets the dump and also um, on that center section. And I think that was my issue. I should have left all of those bolts loose as well and just tightened everything up um, once it was all in. But yeah, it's just a bit of fudging around getting it all to sit nicely, but um, it bolted in perfectly. So FG exhaust system fits the B series, no issues whatsoever. But in saying that, I am running an FG exhaust manifold and FG turbo as well to suit. So, but apart from that, it's um, bolted in beautifully. Actually a really nice fit. Um, it's not looking like it's gonna be hanging down or anything like that, as you can see. Um, yeah, it's a really good fit. Now obviously I haven't got the back bumper on yet. I'm gonna leave the bumpers off while the car goes to get fabrication done on the dump pipe, but I am gonna test it out this morning. I'm gonna get my missus out here to give me a hand. We'll just sit it on there. I just wanna see how the tip clears the cutout in the, in the bumper. But apart from that, like I said, it's all done. So I've got the two O2 sensors here. The blue one um, is the rear one that goes down further down, sort of in the middle of the car near the transmission. And the green one is the one that goes into the dump pipe and they're going to be taking the dump out so they can do some welding on it so i think i'm going to leave that one off but i'll plug the blue one in and uh, get that one sitting up where it's meant to be and that'll be it job done all right i've just slid under the car as you can see there's the bung there for the um oxygen sensor it's actually in the cat converter itself so get that out and put the sensor in just a bung sensor here See if we go get this in. I'll just put a bit of block tight on the thread, just a tiny bit. Can never hurt. I'll try and get this in with two hands, I think, because I don't want to go kink on the cable. So I'll put the phone down. There we go. I've got the sensor screwed in and plugged in. I've got a 22 mil spanner here. So I'll just tighten it up. Just nip it up. And that'll be it. Done. There we go. Oxygen sensors in. And that will pretty much be it. One uh, FG exhaust fitted. Four inch straight through. Well, two mufflers, but a four inch system. But like I said, all done. Went smoothly. That Ants Performance system fit fucking perfectly. I'm keen to get it down on the ground and just sort of see how... Um, how it sits on the floor, if it, how close it sits, but just glad that that all fitted up. Um, yeah, being FG system, I was only going off what I'd seen written online, whether it was gonna fit or not, but yeah, it worked out perfect. But like I said, that's it for this video. Next video will more than likely be fitting the intercooler, because I wanna get onto getting that in. Um, and then yeah, won't be far away from... But like I said, that's it for this video. Next video will probably be fitting the intercooler and then not long after that, we'll be taking it down for um, some fab work done on the dump pipe. So I may get footage of that. We'll see how we go. But yeah, it's slowly getting there. Closer and closer every day. Can't wait till it's done and I can start enjoying it. Soon enough. <laughs>